Hello everyone, this is Access Assistant. This is the second video in a series of videos on how to get data out of Microsoft Access and into an Excel spreadsheet. Today we're using the copy from record set method, which is an Excel method. So in order to use it, we're going to have to use have access automate Excel. We're going to have access, start up a copy of Excel, get a reference to a spreadsheet and a workbook, and then use this copy from record set method and then use some of Excel's formatting methods as well. Now since it's an Excel method that means that we could do everything we're doing today we could do it from Excel instead. So you can use Excel to pull from Access or you can use Access to push to Excel. Today we're pushing from Access to Excel. I might do a follow-up video later on um, explaining how to pull from Excel. So here's our form. This is the same form we had in the first video. Here's our button to actually execute our code. And we're going to go to the code window for on-click event, hit the ellipsis, and here's our uh, empty shell of a method. I'm going to copy empty here a couple things. I'm going to start with um, something I think is always a good idea. If you're going to have a, uh, some code that might possibly run for a while, it's a good idea to show the customers that something is happening. In the case, we use the do command hourglass command and set that to true. That will take that will change their cursor to an hourglass, and that's uh, pretty much universally understood to mean that something is happening. Okay, now I'm going to add down here the reverse command. And this is in our cleanup section. Okay, after all of our code is run here, we make it down to the sub exit, and everything under here should execute before we get to the exit sub. And this is where we end. And here we will have we will change the hourglass or change the cursor back to a cursor. We'll change the hourglass to false. Okay, um, and one quick comment on this <coughs> on error resume next. People will tell you that's a bad idea. But I like to use it in my cleanup code. Let's check it out. Let's say we have some code down here and it encounters an error. Well, it's going to go in and branch down to sub error, get our message box, and then it's going to go to sub exit. And then we're going to have that same command that gave us the error again. Branch down here to sub error, message box, sub exit, get it again. It'll be in an infinite loop. So with on error resume next, that means if we encounter an error in this special little area, our cleanup area, it will just keep going to the next and next command until we get down to the exit sub and you can get out and not be stuck in that infinite loop. All right. Now, we're using the copy from record set method, which means, well, we need a record set that has data in it. So I'm going to copy in a couple of um, variables. SQL as a string, that's going to hold our query. RS1 is going to be a, our DAO record set. That's going to hold our data. I'm going to copy in our query. Here's our SQL statement. SQL, uh, select part number as part number, part name as part name, price, and I added a column to our table called sales sale price. And I'm going to calculate the discount here. So we're, we're we're given this last column here an alias of discount, and it is price minus sales price divided by price. And that's going to yield us a decimal uh, number that we're going to use uh, later on as our discount. And this statement right here is going to actually execute our query and put the data in RS1, which is our data set. The current DB object has an open record set method. We're giving it SQL, our string statement that has the SQL on it, and we're going to give it a parameter that tells it what type of cursor, what type of record set to open. A couple choices here. I'm going to try to be fast as fast as I can on these. I'm going to go from uh, the least resources used to the most resources used, which also is in the order of, I guess you might say, the least, the least capable to the most capable. The DB open forward only, which I'm not showing here. Um, it uses the least resources, but it, it's as the name implies, open forward only. You can walk through your results set one time, and you can only go forward with it. Um, and it can it, it's 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 supposed to be faster. It uses less less resources, so if you only need to go through the data one time, then it's a good one for you to use. 
Um, one caveat about that one is when you get to the last record in your record set, if you encounter, uh, or excuse me, if you interrogate the record count property, it will tell you zero, even though um, that might not be true. DB Open Snapshot is the one I'm using here. It uses a little more resources. It's a little more capable. You can run through your, your record set um, however many times you want to, and you can go forward, backwards, and whatnot. And you can get an accurate record count out of it if you go to the end. Um, there's DB Open Table, which um, you cannot use with an SQL statement. You, you have to give it a table name here, and it just opens your entire table. And DB Open Dynaset, use it with SQL statement. And uh, both of those, the open data set and the open table, they give you a two-way connection to your data source. So there are other methods on the record set that you can use to edit the record set. And with DB open table and DB open data set, those you can commit those changes from the record set back to the table. Uh, so of course, as you might imagine, those use a lot more resources than the open snapshot does. All right, uh, next code we're going to copy in here is a test. I'm going to test whether this query returned any data. Record set one dot record count. If, we, if the record count is zero, I don't want to go through the, the effort of opening Excel and showing the customers or showing my user an empty data set, an empty spreadsheet. So if it's zero, we're going to give a message box that says, hey, there's no data, no data to look at, and we're going to straight down to sub exit to our cleanup code and then get out. Uh, quick note on record counts with these record, with DAO record sets. When you open a DAO record set, yeah, right at this point in time, or right here, <clears throat> the pointer is pointing to the first record in the record set. So if you interrogate record count, if you have one record, if you have a thousand records, the record count is going to tell you one. Uh, the only thing accurate about the record count is whether you have data or not. If there's no data, you really will get a zero. But if there is data, you'll get a one. So at this point in time, the only thing you can really get an accurate reflection of is if you've got data or not. If you need an accurate record count, you're going to have to use the record set dot move last to go all the way to your last record in the record, record set. Then interrogate record count and do whatever it is you got to do, make your decision or save it or whatever you're going to do. And then if you want to walk through your data, you have to use the record set dot move first method to get back to your first record. All right. So here we are at this point. We have a record set that we hope has eight rows of data in it. Now we're going to start building our spreadsheet. That's just a comment. And here we go. Actually, I forgot to pull in some variables we need. Let's put the variables up top here. This brings up the topic of early versus late binding. In order to work with a spreadsheet, we have to have an object. Access has to have a way to point to um, the, the spreadsheet, the, the Excel application and the spreadsheet and the workbook. And we do that with objects. Okay, we're going to we'll define an Excel app to refer to Excel application. That is the running instance of Excel. Excel book is the workbook inside that window and then sheet excel sheet is going to be the sheet we within the workbook that we choose to work with i'm using early binding in this example and what that means is we're going to set a reference to a specific dll on our machine we're going to we went to the tools menu and references and we're going to scroll down to microsoft excel oh, let's go past it there we go there it is check that I've got version 14.0 4 on the machine. That gives us a reference to a specific version of Excel, and that will help us while we're developing the database because now access has access, access has access to all the information that's contained in that DLL. So access can the IntelliSense here in the, in the code window can give us all the help that Access normally likes to give us. It can tell us what methods are available on them application, what methods are available, and properties are available in a workbook and on a worksheet. You can also tell us you know, the, uh, the constants that are available in each of those. Uh, very useful to, to, to have access to when you're writing your code. Not necessary to have if you're just going to run it, though. 
where you can get into trouble with early bindings is since you are pointing to a specific version of Excel on your machine, if you, de if you deploy this to multiple machines elsewhere, if they have different versions of, Act of Excel on their machines than you have, they're going to break. Okay, the, the reference will break and all the Excel code will not work until somebody goes in and does what we just did. They got to go in here to tools and references and then find the reference to their Excel and click it. Uh, so the way you can avoid that is once you've got your database code working, we can comment out these, uncomment these. Excel app will set it equal to a generic object. And then down below, when we start up the Excel application, we'll use a slightly different version, slightly different syntax to do it. Uh, but in that case, what will happen is Windows, Access will ask Windows what version of Excel is on this machine. Windows will go to the registry, find which version, find where the EXE is, and start it up that way. And you don't, you don't have to care. You don't have to know what versions of Excel are on your, your customers' um, machines. But we are using the early binding right now, and the syntax for that is set Excel app equals to an Excel application. Doing this starts an instance of Excel. Now, I always like to hide the Excel application from the users until I'm ready to present it. So we'll do all of our writing of data to the, to the spreadsheet, and when we're all done, we'll show it to them. And we'll do that down here in our cleanup area again, right here. Excel dot app, excuse me, Excel app not visible equals true. All right. Next line here refers to the application, the workbooks collection. I'm going to add a workbook to this Excel application. Right when this opens, there's no workbook open. This opens a blank workbook, and this Excel sheet, Excel book dot workbooks, this is the work, excuse me, dot worksheets collection. This will grab a reference to the first worksheet in this book. All right? And then we can start working with that worksheet. I'm going to type in a with command. <clears throat> what this does, this refers to our Excel sheet here. I'm going to have a bunch of commands in here that are going to work with the worksheet. So instead of having to type Excel sheet in every single one of them, what we can do in here is go dot and access says, well, everything in here, if we if we type a dot with nothing to the left, it's referring to Excel sheet. So dot name equals, and I'm going to call first tab, the first sheet on their discount. That will give that first tab a name of discount instead of sheet one. And I'm going to copy in some formatting code underneath that. I'm going to set the, uh, the cells collection, the font name in all the cells in the whole spreadsheet to calibrate all the cells, the font size to 11. And then I want to resize the columns so our data will fit. The columns collection, we specify column A, column width property, 13. Our first column is part number, so we're going to give it 13. Uh, our second column is the part name. I'm giving that 25 because it's a bit longer. And the next three are price, sale price, and discount. I'll give each of those 10. That's plenty of space for those to fit. And since those last three are numbers, we wanted to format them as numbers. Column C, the number format, give it this string. I'm giving it this string. The way this works is everything to the left of that semicolon is what to do with the positive number. Everything to the right is what to do with the negative number. So for positive numbers, I want to sh always show a number to the left of the decimal, and I always want to show two numbers to the right. These pound signs tell it to, uh, if there's a number there, display the number. If not, display blanks. It's my thousand separator, and that's our currency symbol. Everything's the same for the negative, except I've got a negative number on there. And the last column was our discount column. So remember, our calculation in the, in the SQL was going to yield us a decimal. And I want to convert that to a, to a uh, percentage in the spreadsheet. So again, I've got our dummy numbers up here. I'm always going to show one to the left, one to the right. And if there's more than one to the right, I'm going to show it as well. And then the percent sign here will format that as a percent. So that will take our, 
our decimal will turn into first cent. So a, a 0 0.10 that's yielded from our calculation will turn into a 10 with a percent sign beside it. And the next thing we're going to do is actually <clears throat> move the data from our record set into the spreadsheet. We do that with the range, the range um, property of the Excel sheet, and this is going to tell us tell it to start at A2. Okay, so uh, first column A, second row of the spreadsheet, copy from record set method, copy what into there? RS1. So it will start at A2, and however many columns are in at RS1, it'll go to the right until it runs out of columns, and the same thing with the rows. It'll go down to the bottom until it runs out of uh, until it runs out of rows. Let's hop over here to our form and run this. And our spreadsheet pops up. Part number, part name, price, sale price. And here we have, right there, we have our, our decimal. The, the calculation again, like I said, yielded 0 0.1075. And the uh, percent formatting turned it into 10.75. Notice we do not have any column headings here. That's a bad thing. Okay, copy from record set does not give you column headings like transfer spreadsheet did. So let's head back over to our, our code real fast. And you got some choices for how to deal with column headings. You can uh, hard code the column headings since we know what they are. They're hard coded in our query. You could use the cells.value property and just write the, uh, the, the column names in there. Or we can use a record set to our advantage. A record set has a fields a fields collection. And each field has a name stored in the record set as the metadata, in the metadata square, excuse me. The fields collection is a zero based index. I'm going to use a for next loop here. I'm declaring a variable here called calls, I'm setting it equal to zero for the first loop. And I'm telling you, we're going to loop through this for next. We loop through it until we run out of columns, or excuse me, until we run out of fields in our record set. Record set .fields count. We know that our record set has five columns in it. It's a zero based index, which means the last field will actually be field four. Zero is the first field, one is the second field, so forth and so on. So we're going to start at zero and go to fields count minus one. And here we are here, rs1.fields, whichever column we're on, and the name. And we're going to put that into a cell into the value property of a cell. Which cell we put it into? Here's the collection. Here's the uh, parameters. The first index is which row to put it in. We're going to put it in the first row of our spreadsheet. And then, <laughs> and here's where it gets fun, the indexes for the columns collection is not zero based. It's one based. So when we're working with field zero in a record set, we need to be working with field one, or excuse me, we need, we need to be working with column one in our spreadsheet. So we'll take columns and add one to it each time. And that will give us column headings. Run it again. There we go. There we got column headings. And that's it. Um, we already talked about how to deal with, well, we did not, we didn't quite finish dealing with the uh, late binding. Okay, so I'm not going to run it, but I'll just show you the syntax very quickly up here. Um, this is the early binding syntax. If you wanted to use late binding, you'll go up to the top and comment out these, uncomment the generic objects. You can remove your DLL reference under tools.references, and instead of setting Excel app to an Excel application, you would set it equal to a create object. Set Excel app equal to create object and we feed it this string. And access will ask, ask Windows. Go to the registry, find me this application, find me where exe lives, and start it up. And everything from there works the same. So I hope you found this video informative. I hope you come back for the next one where we'll talk about uh, running through a spread, a uh, work, a, excuse me, running through a record set like we just did, except writing uh, the values from the work from the record set into individual cells of the spreadsheet. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.